Triple M's Rush Hour with Liesl Jones, Liam and Dobbo. Now, in the midst of Brisbane's 2032 Olympic Games organising disaster, with everything that's going on with the stadium, the other issue or the other idea, Liesl, that has emerged of recent times is this enhanced games concept. Which tickles my fancy. Yeah, I know. We've (laughs) spoken about it already. And it is a huge honour to be able to welcome in the man who's come up with this concept, uh, the one and only Dr. Aaron D'Souza. Dr. Aaron, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. This is such a wonderful idea. I am actually really excited about it because as athletes, you kind of joke around about this enhanced games or letting people go. And I feel personally, I'm quite excited by the concept of it. How has this been for you to bravely put yourself out there and put all your backing behind this to make this a reality? Uh, well, it was a huge uh, gamble. I was commenting to a member of my staff that when we dropped the first press release about nine months ago, uh, I was burning my entire professional reputation uh, on an untested concept. And we put a video out on Twitter. It got 9 million views in 24 hours. And then Balaji Srinivasan, who's one of the world's top venture capitalists, DM'd me on Twitter. And he said, I love this. Can I invest? Um, And within an hour, we had agreed on his investment, and it's just gone from strength to strength. Um, And so, you know, it was pretty... um uh, it was pretty trying in those first few minutes and days, um, but you know it's an amazing uh, result that we've got with uh, athletes, um, fans, media properties all backing this now, um, and we're building the future of sports. Doctor, I've got to ask you, and, and I understand completely the concept, and we've talked about it a lot. But you talked about your background; you've had an amazing business background. Is this more about, and and with venture capitalists, about another challenge for you as a business leader, or is this more seriously about giving athletes who in some ways wouldn't compete in Olympics an opportunity to compete in another form of competition? Yeah, so uh, according to the Olympics' own research, 44% of Olympians have used banned performance-enhancing drugs, Um, and this is a 2012 study sorry, it was a 2018 study um, uh, that was funded by the World Anti-Doping Agency. And we want to create a fair and an honest competition, uh, and one that is transparent and that's open. And at the same time, we want to ensure that athletes like Liesl can uh, earn huge amounts of money. Uh, the Olympics bring in rivers of gold in terms of television and broadcast revenues, but they waste that money building a dozen stadiums every four years and then throwing them away after two weeks. It's one of the most wasteful exercises in human history, and there's a better way to do it. I'm surprised by those numbers, actually. What did you say? 44% of people have used banned substances before. Yeah, yeah. In, in the past year, according to really rigorous peer-reviewed research that was conducted uh, by Professor Ultrix at Comstock and published in the Journal of Sports Medicine in 2018. It's an excellent survey, uh, one which was funded by the Olympics themselves. And, um, you know, it's it's uh, really underground. And, you know, when I talk to Australian Olympics, I, I would emphasize that Australia probably has the most rigorous drug testing regime in the world. Um, and uh, But, you know, you look at countries like Kenya and Jamaica, they do virtually no testing. Um, and that's why they're spending little to no money and getting great results in terms of the metal tally. Yeah, that's really fascinating. Uh, in terms of the nitty gritty of the event, what events will you be running? So whether it's so James Magnuson has already put his hand up. So assuming that the hundred freestyle is going to be an event, have you sorted through what the actual events will be so far? Yeah. So um, the core problem about the Olympic Games, going back to Brisbane Stadium uh, debacle, is the need for complex, expensive infrastructure. And so at the Enhanced Games, we're focused on the sports that have the highest television and social media impact with the lowest infrastructural cost. So this means uh, track and field, swimming and diving, gymnastics, combat sports, and weightlifting. Five individual sports that don't require a specialist infrastructure so we could deliver our games for tens of millions of dollars rather than tens of billions of dollars. I understand all of that, but take it from a purist who loves sport. And I want to be devil's advocate here. I love the Olympic Games because I believe that this is when Liesl Jones swam in the pool and she won gold for Australia. She was a clean athlete that had trained for four years, day in, day out, to get to that moment, representing her country. And you know what? 
She did us proud. One gold sang um, her national anthem. When you open up this, and I understand this, how can it have any credibility? How can it have, other than earning some money for the for the athletes, how can it have it? Because it's not a legitimate thing because they're juiced up or, 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 or they've used performance-enhancing drugs. So can you see how there can be some negative response to it? And, and I'm, this is not me. I'm just trying to ask you. Can you understand how there's going to be some pushback on this? Absolutely, and I, and, and, I, and I appreciate it. And I think that the Olympics should be a guardian of natural sports competition, have rigorous drug testing and harsh penalties, but allow an alternative competition, which is the enhanced games. And what I would point to is that from the inception of the Olympics in 1896 until 1992, they banned professional athletes. They felt that professional athletes were cheaters, who had an unfair competitive advantage and were polluting the integrity of sport. And look at the language they used to describe pro athletes, particularly Jim Thorpe um, in the 1930s and 40s. Um, it's very similar to the language they use about doping today. And so um, in, in that time of sports, we had uh, separate amateur and professional competitions because they felt that uh, professionalization added an unfair competitive dynamic. And so in the same way, we should have a natural Olympic Games, you know, and on the other hand, an enhanced um, Games and as two very different competitions. Dr. D'Souza, I'm not sure if you've seen the comments today from former Olympic gold medalist and current boss of the Australian Sports Commission, Kieran Perkins. He's come out today, the day we're speaking to you, and said that if these Games are allowed to go ahead, someone will die. How, How do you respond to those comments from a person that is not only a former Olympian, but is also at the pointy end of, a, of sports in Australia. Yeah, and I would say to Kieran, uh, number one, I would love to debate you in public on live TV, and let's have a fully informed debate. Um, so people like Kieran Perkins and John Coates have been going out in the media saying awful things about uh, me personally, um, but they refuse to have a live in-studio debate, and I'm happy to have that anywhere in the world at any time. And to, to Kieran's point, um, when 44% of athletes, according to the Olympics' own research, are using banned performance enhancements, they're doing so without clinical supervision. They're not doing it safely. Um, and so the enhanced games will, in fact, be a safer sporting event because we're taking something that's done in the shadows, in the darkness, and shining a light upon it so that um, it can be done safely under clinical supervision um, and scientific guidance. Dr. D'Souza, do you have any personal things that you would like to see happen at these games? Would you like to see someone run 8.9 seconds or would you love to see someone do the 100 freestyle like James Magnuson in, I don't know what even the world record is now, 40, 47, Quick. yeah, 47 seconds? Is there anything personally you would like to see? I would like to see someone who's in their 30, 40s or even 50 years of age breaking world records Um, because the same compounds that are used to make athletes run faster and jump higher uh, are also the compounds that enable us to be younger and stronger for longer. And I don't think that athletes should be viewed as being sent out to pasture at age 30. Um, And science and technology will enable longer and healthier and more productive and profitable careers for athletes. And I think in due course, the enhanced games will erase the concept of being a senior citizen because aging is a disease that we should be able to treat, cure, and eventually solve. Doctor, I'm 48 this year in July. Uh, Dobby, you're yeah, past no, that, but you're I, past reckon, that. I reckon I'm a chance. If I, if I got to 55, I mean, I can see a real earn coming for me. I really can. <laughs> what I would think you do, Dobby? I'd swim, I'd would run, you? I'd do whatever. I'd wait, do a triathlon. I could, I could do okay, anything, mate, right. anything. In, in all seriousness... <laughs> Did you, in, in your wildest dreams, expect the White House and the President of the United States of America to, as of today, come out and express deep concerns? I mean, at, at no stage when you got into this and, and you invested the time and energy and with venture capitalists, and, and obviously it, it, you are very open and transparent about this, did you, did you expect now that we've got the President Joe Biden really in a lot of ways, condemning this? Uh, you know, I, I I did not think that this would be the case, but I always recognize that the Olympic Committee has powerful friends and that they're entrenched in government. And, you know, they are a very unaccountable organization. So, Liesl, you're a uh, Olympian. Do you know how members of the International Olympic Committee are elected? No, I think there's a vote, but that's about all I know. Uh, no, there's <laughs> no vote. for it.
No. So logically, oh. Olympians would elect the members of the IOC. No, the IOC appoints itself. It's like the Communist Party of Piliberto. So it's not accountable to the athletes. And so they have this multi-billion dollar monopoly. The bureaucrats do. People like Kieran Perkins and John Coates. Um, and they are unaccountable. And their vast salaries and gravy trains and private jets and uh, the palace that the IOC pre president lives in um, are all threatened by the enhanced games. And so they are trying to line up political support. But, you know, President Biden in his statement said that the White House is deeply concerned about the enhanced games and they hope for a clean and fair Olympic Games. Well, President Biden there will never be a clean and fair Olympic Games unless there is an enhanced games because we are giving athletes an alternative avenue of competition. And most importantly, the Olympics drug testing does not work. And it doesn't work because they don't have the baseline clinical data to calibrate their drug tests. And only the enhanced games will have that. And we are offering an olive branch of collaboration to the uh, to the White House and to the Enhanced Games um, to to work together. Dr. D'Souza, we've just seen, and I'm not saying it's the same, but we've seen something of a parallel in the world of golf. What was the norm for a very long time with the PGA Tour, then experienced this civil war with the emergence of Live Golf. It wasn't about performance enhancing drugs; it was it was money driven, and. It fractured the sport for a period of time. There seems to be something of a healing. But the question was, how could Liv get the best athletes? How, how does the enhanced games attract athletes at their peak or at their prime? Because if right now, if, if you were to ask the best of the best to come and compete, I don't think you get them. I think what you're likely to get is James Magnusons, the people that are... You'd get Usain Bolt. Past their you. prime. You'd get Usain Bolt. I, th I think you would, but doesn't it make it then sort of a, a second-rate pony show if you can't have the best athletes in the world competing? Uh, well, that's a great question. Can you name for me the best track and field athlete in the world today? Uh, it's uh, I, I like the uh, – what's the women's Olympic hurdler from America? Her name eludes me now. Exactly, right? So gonna, the core challenge for Olympians is that they get 15 minutes of fame every four years. And so Live Golf had to pay hundreds of millions of dollars to their athletes because they were earning tens of millions. And I recognize that we will have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to our athletes because they're only earning tens of thousands. And Lisa, you will know better than anyone how difficult it is to be a professional athlete, even in Australia, with the generous support of Australian Sports Commission funding. Uh, the average Australian Olympian only earns about thirty or forty thousand dollars a year, uh, and in the U.S. and the U.K. and these are the rich countries, half of all Olympians live in poverty. And so, what is going to allow us to break world records is not just performance enhancements; it's also the financial stability we will offer to athletes, so they can focus full time on their competition. They don't have to work two jobs. I, I really like that. Uh, can I just go back on Biden? If Biden's against it, have you had a conversation with Trumpy? Well, I have not had a conversation directly with President. Trump, but I would note that Peter Thiel, who is our largest investor, is a prominent Republican donor. He's the co-founder of PayPal uh, and a great friend of President Trump's. And I mean this genuinely. There's every chance that if he is to run and, and, and gets back, and the White House will be supportive of the enhanced games. I think that is a, a probable outcome. Uh, you know, in the divisive yeah. world of politics that we have today, when the Democrats <laughs> do something, the Republicans do the opposite. And I think yeah. the Olympics made a miscalculation by not seeking bipartisan support, or they probably couldn't have gotten bipartisan support because um, the Republicans realize that bodily autonomy and healthcare privacy uh, are very important rights. Imagine if Donald Trump competed in the enhanced well, hey, oh, I think he just won his golf championship. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he did. He's having enhanced work. We all agree with it. I think everybody agrees we love him, but something's there. There's Do something there. Dr. D'Souza, let's talk practical logistics now. It's, I mean, off the conversation with you, I have minimal doubt in my man, mind that these this things is gonna are work. happening. Right? This is going to work. So, so, so where? Where, where, what country, uh, given the presence of WADA and the scope of WADA, what country do you see as being a viable location for these games? Yeah, so um, I always say don't think of the enhanced games as the Olympics plus steroids. We're reinventing the model from scratch. And so one of the problems about the Olympics is that there's no one city in the world that has all the requisite infrastructure. 
And, uh, you know, if we want to break the marathon world record and the 100 meter on the same day. That requires different climate and weather. And so instead of having the games in just one city, we can ha- have it uh, in the optimal places with the optimal infrastructure and united by the magic of broadcasting. And so that's reinventing the model. And I would note to three great journalists here, when Brisbane accepted the Olympic Games, um, it was sold to the, to the taxpayer at zero net cost. And there's already been $7 billion budgeted for it by the Queensland and federal governments. And I think Queensland got, you know, a white elephant. But there was no other city that wanted to host the games. The IOC was desperate. And that's why Queensland is hosting the games. And I think it's going to go the way of the Commonwealth Games, like Daniel Andrews. He's going to oh, say, I agree. Just well, this is what I just expensive. said yesterday, we, isn't it? We literally agree I with you. I just said this yesterday. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, I feel that there's a flat track on the Gold Coast that any, any good marathon runner can win. Like, I think the Gold Coast is the marathon. And look, as I said, I'm happy. Like, if there's something that I can do to get some a couple of extra hundred thousand dollars, I'm more than happy to put my body through enhancement. I really, am. I mean that genuinely. I mean, I never got to the levels of Liesl Jones. I never is in the same arena. He's already donated his body to science, so there's no yeah, like, risk happy. or anything I'm there. Happy. So I'm he's happy. Happy. <laughs> Dr. D'Souza. This okay. So I uh, I love the answer about the fact that yeah, you are reinventing the model. This doesn't need one set geographical location to host these games. And is can I ask about, we've heard James Magnuson, he's kind of that shining light here in Australia. What about athlete pickup elsewhere in the world? Have you had a response from whether it be individuals or sporting bodies more broadly? Has there been interest and, and take up of this idea from the athletes themselves? Absolutely. We've had thousands of athletes reach out to us uh, wanting to come, come and compete at Enhanced Games. And next Monday, we will be announcing uh, a major media partner. A world-class Hollywood um, outfit has uh, taken a very strong interest in the Enhanced Games, and we now have an exclusive partnership. And athletes will be formally invited to apply, and we will be announcing the compensation structure for athletes um, to participate in the Games. Um, and so we've had thousands of athletes reach out to us, but we've never had a web place on our website. They just, you know, find me on Instagram and DM me. I don't know that I'd put my body on the line to compete again. I don't, I think I've lost my touch, but do you need any commentators for the enhanced games? Cause I will happily do that. Uh, we would absolutely love you to be a commentator and my, my team will follow up about that because, um, you know, we, (laughs) we, we appreciate your support and your openness and your, and, 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 uh, honesty. Um, and you know, um, I'll point to the fact, you know, Joe Rogan was the, um, lead commentator for the UFC in its early days and launched him to being the number one podcaster in the world. So maybe Liesl, uh, we can do, uh, <laughs> we're going that elevate way. you to we're the global stage. Step way, Dr. Aaron, it's a package deal. <laughs> yeah, we all go together. Strictly we're one, in, team. Can I one ask, team, one dream. Can I ask you this? I mean, you're not doing this for free and I mean this in, in all seriousness, you're going to make a quit out of this by the end of it. You know, uh, I had a very successful career as a venture capitalist. Um, and it was nice. It has been, it was very good to me. Uh, and uh, I probably will earn less money doing this. Um, than I was doing in my previous career, and I never had to deal with journalists uh, or Kieran Perkins or John Coates saying nasty things about me in my hometown <laughs> media. Uh, so sometimes I, 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 I think I should have just you know stayed uh, investing. But I'm doing this because um, one, it's wonderful to improve the conditions of athletes, um, and I hope we will force the Olympics to pay all of its athletes. Um, and if we can do that, uh, this has been a very successful project and a good investment of our time. And at the same time, I think we're inspiring the world to think about science in a new and an innovative way. And that's always a good thing. I love it. The re- I mean, college sports in America have yeah. this same revolution. Oh they went up and now. Ha- before we let you go, Dr. Aaron, I mean, what some people may have read but may not have read, they may just be aware of the Enhanced Games, is that you're an Aussie. Yeah. I'm a, Whereabouts are you, where are you from originally? Uh, I, I'm from Melbourne. Uh, I come from a very proud Chinese-Australian family that has been in Australia for uh, nearly 175 years. Um, and I grew up uh, at my uh, in our family home in the Yarra Valley that's uh, been, been in our family for like 75 years. And um, unfortunately, I lost my accent along the way going to school in America yeah. and yeah. In England, but no, uh, Melbourne is my home uh, and a place that I hold very dear, dear in my heart. I mean, if you're ever back, particularly in the Sunshine State, we'd love you to we'd come in to in person because I don't know about you two, but yeah. 
super I'm, impressed. I'm, I'm really like I'm really in now. I'm, I'm, this has been an incredible conversation <laughs> that has uh, that I think is an important one to have, yeah. Bobo. Yeah, and we're really proud that you've actually given us some time. We understand how busy you are, yeah. and and to be honest with you, there's a lot of people throwing a lot of mud to stand up and and talk and be f- honest with it. I think it's going to s- break down a lot of barriers. And, and I like the fact that you've you've offered that anywhere to talk to Kieran Perkins or John Coach. You're more than happy to talk to them because that's the way things are going to change. Um, yeah. People can throw from a fence, but unless they're prepared to actually have the debate and listen, uh, they're not going to get anywhere. Exactly. And so I hope uh, you guys reach out to, to Kieran Perkins and John Coates uh, and I'll fly out to Queensland if they'll come into the studio and we can have a live debate on Triple M. Now we're talking. Fun. Now we're talking. Dr. Aaron D'Souza, the man behind the Enhanced Games. We really appreciate your time and, and we look forward to hearing what comes next. Thanks so much.